Behind me is the Via model from Atomic Homes and tell you what, people have been lining up to get in this thing all day. As you can see, the outside has a very cool look. It's got black on black on black. I'm gonna see if I can track down the co-founder, have a little bit of a conversation with him and then get inside and see what this thing's all about. Let's do it. This tiny home was built by a company that I've been following for a while now, so I was very excited to be able to see it in person. The unit shown is their Via model with a footprint of 40 feet long by 10 feet wide in which they fit one full bedroom, a loft, a bathroom, a kitchen, a living room, and what I'd probably describe as a flex area, but more on that in just a second. It isn't every day I see a home with black siding, a black roof, and black windows but tell you what the look slaps this model is optioned with a loft for 80 plus extra square feet but is available without the loft in a standard or gooseneck build cruising around the outside of the home you can see they definitely didn't skimp on windows and i think all in all they've got the look figured out just for a bit of backstory here the via was designed by live connected and built by their manufacturing partner atomic homes this is important because i have been very interested in what's going on over at live connected for quite some time now and finally had a chance to talk to their founder about their unique approach to modular. If you've been watching the channel lately, The Vegas Show was a great opportunity to see a lot of homes in a short amount of time, but it was a bit of a challenge working around all of the people show was absolutely packed. To be able to make this video and show everyone who wasn't in Vegas what they've got going on, they briefly closed off the home for you, the viewers, to be able to get a private tour. And it ended up being kind of like MTV Cribs. Welcome to the Via. We have a 40-foot Via model here uh, that we brought to Texas, to uh, Texas, brought to Las Vegas uh, for the uh, uh, International Builders Show. Uh, we are in Show Village, which is an uh, exposition of a number of tiny homes uh, and uh, park model RVs. So please come on in. We'll show you the main or, or primary uh, bedroom in the unit. Uh, unlike a lot of park model RVs, we've actually done uh, the bedrooms all at grade, so you don't have uh, level changes in this particular model. Uh, we're standing in a via that is 10 feet wide by 40 feet long. So we are maxing out the allowable uh, square footage size for a park model RV at just under 400 square feet. Uh, excluded from that is an additional 87 square foot uh, loft space that we have located above the kitchen and bathroom. Um, I like to say that's a spot where we can uh, give our kids some screen time or a little kind of sleeping nook. Um, in this model, we have a second bedroom as well. Uh, back through here. We've had some customers elect to um, include that wall and separate and have a second bedroom. Uh, we've had others that have asked to remove that wall so that you have a, a much larger living and dining space. Um, so that's at that end of the house. Here you see uh, the kitchen. Um, we have a, a full-size fridge. We've got a, a gas range. Uh, and we also have a washer dryer uh, unit, a combined unit uh, under the stairs. So we, we kind of use the stairs for maximum amount of storage and try to use every square inch of, uh, uh, of the design here. Here we have a, a, a full size bathroom. Uh, and then this is the primary living space. So we have uh, a fold-out table. This is uh, an add-on. We have a number of like add-ons and upgrades that are available. Uh, so this can fold up and become a, a dining table for two to three people. Uh, we also have a, a coffee table here and a, a couch. So we also offer assistance with like specifying furniture, given the you know smaller parameters of the of the house, very specific types of furniture. Um, can make all the difference. So we're happy to advise on that as well. So here is the, uh, the second bedroom. Again, a flex room can be used as an office space. And as I mentioned, this wall can be uh, omitted so that you have a dining area and then a kind of living space back here as well. It was really cool to be able to see the Via in person, but I had more questions. So they reopened it for viewing and we got to chatting outside. So I've been on your website a few times. I've been following you guys for a bit now and you've got kind of two different lines. You've got the tiny home park model RV line yeah. and then you've got the Connexus line. You're right. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the Connexus line? I'm sure. really interested in the click system. Great. Um, so it's actually where we started. 
uh, with the Conexus line. The Conexus line, the idea was, how do we rethink uh, the, the modular world, right? We saw so many uh, failures in that space, in the modular space, um, and some of the things that we noticed right off the bat were uh, most modular was what's called volumetric modular, so you're shipping a lot of empty space. That doesn't make sense in any other industry, shipping a lot of empty space. You see Apple making the smallest box they can and trying to economize the way you ship. So we thought, is there a different way that we can manufacture this housing? Um, and it came to kind of a hybrid solution with panelization of walls, uh, roof, floors, and then having some um, uh, cartridges, uh, chiefly the bathroom, the kitchen, uh, and then some millwork components for uh, living dining spaces and bedroom spaces. And so with that, we imagined this, uh, this system that's akin to like a Lego set, where we could arrive at a site, the site needs to be prepped, we can have any manner of foundations. We like to say uh, the Conexus is foundation agnostic. Um, and so at that point, the components, we call it componently construction, that's the click system, that these, these hybrid pieces can click together on site. Why that's so exciting is that the one bedroom unit, which is about 500 square feet on the Conexus, we have assembled repeatedly uh, in four hours to six hours with a uh, group of four to six laborers. Um, so that opens up a world of possibility. In environmentally sensitive sites, uh, uh, we're able to uh, not use a crane. We're able to show up there with manpower and something as simple as a, a telehandler, which is a glorified forklift, uh, and be able to assemble in just a matter of hours. That's drawn interest from the federal government uh, for disaster relief applications. Uh, we're finalists in a number of, uh, of those instances, particularly Maui after the, uh, the fires, uh, and then in the state of Texas, which is very progressive and trying to find solutions to future uh, issues. So. We started that, uh, and in the process of prototyping that, um, Abby Shank, uh, who runs Endeavor, which is our, our distribution arm of the enterprise, our partner, um, she spotted one of these behind our manufacturer's uh, facility, our manufacturer's Atomic Homes, okay. and so she immediately said, uh, love the quality of this construction. Have you ever thought about doing tiny homes? Right. The answer is we hadn't. We said that would be fun, uh, much like modular, when we looked at the tiny home world uh, and park model RVs, we said they are building these things so poorly as architects and designers, we hate them and somebody has to do a better job. And so we came in and we said, let's give it an R value of like 23, something double, triple what's on the market. Yeah. Then we could cut down on the, the mechanical loads, energy consumption, nice. and you have something that lasts a lot longer. Right. So we took the same principles of the Conexus line and then applied it. Um, to this line, cool. uh, which we call the VIA. What would you say you're most excited about for the modular industry? There seems to be a new wave of interest from both builders and consumers, from what I'm seeing. What, what are you excited about? Uh, what I'm excited about is there is substantial interest enough uh, coupled with, for the first time, complete awareness by the federal and uh, state governments yeah. that there is an unnecessary amount of cost going into the approval process. And there's gotta be a rethinking about the way that we build. We've been building the same way, almost completely unchanged since the 1950s, right? Every other product that we manufacture has in some way improved its efficiency, except for construction. It makes no sense. And so we have a, for the first time, a, 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 um, an audience uh, in Washington, D.C. Our group, uh, Live Connected, has been going on a monthly basis, uh, meeting with center's office, uh, representatives' offices, and, and pushing uh, legislative changes to building code uh, to reduce what we're finding to be at least a six-figure increase in cost in every house that's built because of the regulatory wow, process. That's crazy. So we can't control inflation, we can't control um, material availability. We can't always control labor costs. The market determines those, but we can control the regulatory process. And we have the attention. Um, what we think that'll do is if the, 
If laws change around the approval process, it'll spur competition. Competition will spur decrease in price and availability, increase in availability, uh, and the market will take off. I mean, modular has always been this thing like, why isn't this happening? Yeah. It's like right around That's the corner. A question. Yeah. And, and we finally see an opportunity for it to be actually happening. Um, and, you know, we love all the competition. There's so many different takes on it. Yeah. And the demand is enough that it, it can satisfy everybody. Um, just before I let you go here, I'm going to head inside. Is there anything you're especially proud of that we should be looking for as we go through this house here? Um, I think um, we're super proud of not having drywall or uh, you know, um, we have what we think is a much more sustainable take on construction, far more resilient. Um, we've got, uh, you know, birch uh, plywood nice. with rapidly renewable like poplar substrate, all locally sourced. Um, we're, we're really proud of uh, kind of the sourcing there, but we're also proud of the ergonomics that a lot of the tiny homes might have more uh, or less involvement from an architect. Um, and design group and putting together uh, the live team with the atomic team yeah. we think it's unlike anything else out on the market um, and that uh, it just feels a lot bigger than most tiny homes we've got higher ceilings better dimensions yeah. so we're just proud in general the experience and think it's kind of an uplifting space and kind of surprises everybody that walks in there okay there you have it big thank you to atomic homes live connected and jordan for taking the time and giving me a bit of access to be able to show what they've got going on i'm always interested to see more of what they're doing so yes i will be following along with what they're up to and posting updates right here on my youtube channel thanks for watching see you in the next one